I've seldom been as irritated with a product announcement as I was with Apple's unveiling of its new MacBook, which it continues to call Pro, despite removing features professionals use all the time. An SD card slot, full-size USB ports, and a magnetic charging cable that saves the thing from certain destruction when you trip over the cord. So when I went to buy the new MacBook Pro, my fingers faltered at the Buy Now button, and I started wondering if any other computers offered these features. And then I remembered there is. In fact, I was at the launch event for it. It's Microsoft's new Surface Book with performance base, and this is part one of the Mr. Mobile review. It's just part one because I've only used the new Surface Book for about 48 hours. I still need a few more days to get a better sense of battery life and to give time for those inevitable post-honeymoon bugs to appear. But even after two days, there's plenty to cover. This year's Surface Book uses the same two-in-one design as the launch model did in 2015. That means all the machine's vital guts are in the top half, which Microsoft calls the clipboard and is unchanged from earlier in the year. The processor driving it is the older Skylake Core i7, rather than one of Intel's newer Kaby Lake chips, but given the performance I've seen thus far, I'm not too worried about a lack of power here. Similarly, the 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte hard drive offer plenty of space to spread out in. The display has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, which makes it look bigger than its 13.5 inch diagonal, and it's got excellent color saturation and contrast. It's also overlaid with a digitizer that makes the included Surface Pen work. I don't often find room for a pen in my workflow, but I love how this one gives you an eraser to undo your doodles, and a magnetic strip to latch onto when you're done. But like I say, this is all old news. The 2016 doesn't show up until you drop the tablet onto the new performance dock. Magnets help you out with the last inch or so, and an electrical charge causes something called muscle wire inside the mechanism to contract, bonding the two halves so tightly that you'd never know they were separate. The new performance dock bucks the trend of slimmer, lighter hardware. It's actually thicker and heavier than last year's dock, but for good reason. There are bigger batteries in this one. Microsoft tells me the batteries between tablet and dock now total out to 81.4 watt hours. That's about 18% more capacity than the launch model, and there's also a new cooling assembly with double the fans for more efficient thermal control. Most important for the pros, an updated graphics processor in the dock with double the graphics RAM of last year. The Surface Book automatically uses this GPU when docked and won't let you separate the tablet if you're running a program that needs it. All this adds up to a machine that exudes power in ways both expected and not. On the not side, I was unprepared for the three and a half pounds of this device coming out of the box. It looks so futuristic, with the white silver paint job on the magnesium and dynamic fulcrum hinge that I guess I expected space age weightlessness as well. Still, it's a full pound lighter than the MacBook Pro 15 I've been schlepping all over for years, so there's that. On the less surprising side of things, Windows 10 sings on this machine. I made a conscious decision not to baby the Surface Book, to use my preferred programs right from the start. That means Chrome instead of Edge, Spotify instead of Groove, and lots of skipping back and forth between many open programs. Now, this absolutely destroys the battery life, of course. Microsoft claims 16 hours of use on a charge, but on a typical day of this I guess reckless usage, I only got five hours out of it. I'll test it more conservatively in the days ahead and get back to you in part two with a final battery verdict. On the plus side though, the only slowdowns I've seen from the Surface Book so far have been the occasional slips and stutters in Adobe Premiere, a resource heavy video editing program. And the simple act of using the machine is very comfortable. Windows Hello, which reads your eyeballs to log you in, really is a more convenient security measure than a password or fingerprint. The trackpad is large and responsive, with smooth scrolling and gesture response, and the keys have great travel with nice chunky feedback. After two days, I could absolutely see using the new Surface Book as my daily machine. The real test will come once the honeymoon phase is up. 
In the next and final installment of this review, we'll average out a few full to empty runs and see how well the Surface Book holds up in both reckless and power sipping modes. We'll find out how older Surface Book owners like their devices after a year, and I'll compare the machine's sizable price tag to some other laptops and tell you whether it makes sense for someone like you. If you're one of those older Surface Book owners or you want to know something specific about it in part two, drop a comment wherever you're watching this. And if it's on YouTube, subscribe so you don't miss more mobile tech media from Mr. Mobile. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.